So I wanted to start out by showing you a textbook example of monophysitism and specifically Eutychianism. And I keep saying Eutychianism because there are technically two forms of the monophysite heresy. There is Apollinarianism, which teaches that the body of the Lord Jesus Christ was truly human, but his soul and his spirit were not. They were divine. And so the consciousness of that human body was the divine nature, almost like the divine nature possessed a human body or something like that. Of course, this denies the true humanity of Jesus Christ also because it says that he did not have a human soul and spirit. And of course, the Bible teaches that he was human in all aspects, body, soul, and spirit. This is Eutychianism, which teaches that the flesh itself was divine, that there was a complete mixture of the two natures. So let's listen to our favorite actor, Jonathan Shelley. And I always say he's an actor because he literally was a thespian. He's a drama club nerd uh and in my estimation this is just another role he's playing of pastor but let's listen to him real quick jesus christ was god in the flesh his flesh was divine his flesh was not just of woman it was also of god he's different than you and me my dad was a man so to them what it means for christ to be god in the flesh means that the flesh is divine of course that's not what christianity has historic historically taught and that's not what the bible teaches either and this is the crux of the issue. He said, he's not like you and me. This is why this is a heretical position because it denies the true humanity of Jesus Christ. And therefore he cannot be our perfect substitutionary atonement. But nobody comes to this conclusion, to this unbiblical heretical conclusion from reading the Bible or something like that. This happened. And definitely Shelley did not come up with this on his own. He is regurgitating Anderson's talking points. He doesn't come up with anything on his own. Um, he is an Anderson robot, but this happened. It's almost like the new IFB were tricked into taking this position simply because Manly Perry was denying that God can die, which is the historical Christian position. God cannot die. So they felt that the only way to debunk Manly Perry's assertion that the divine nature cannot die was to say that the flesh was divine and the flesh died. Therefore, God can die. So it's almost like the way they were tricked into teaching a tritheistic trinity a three-body trinity because they thought that was the best way to debunk uh what they perceive to be modalism and so they take this extreme heretical position now let's take a look at how all the pastors of the new ifb completely independent one of another come to the same exact conclusion that manny perry is a reprobate right? a complete coincidence has nothing to do with them being a cult or anything like that. A certain preacher, <clears throat> Manly Perry, who has been a wicked, lying, slanderer of our church. Um, a user. I'm going to be preaching on marking and avoiding people, and I'm, I'm specifically applying the scripture tonight to uh, Manly Perry, pastor of Old Path Baptist Church. Now, but you know what? Manly Perry's worse than a hireling, because not only does he just not preach against the false prophet, not only does he just flee when he sees the wolf, he says the wolf is doing more for God than anyone. That's worse than a hireling. C can anybody deny that... All of these guys try their hearts out to sound exactly like Anderson and to use his same delivery and his same hand gestures and everything. I mean, it's ridiculous. They're, they're stopping just short of getting facial reconstruction. <laughs> it's really, it's, it's sad. I think this is the guy who actually preached a whole sermon about Lester Roloff roasting in hell or something like that. Might have been another guy, but I'm pretty sure it was this guy. Link. But I've been accused of uh, attacking the deity of Jesus Christ, okay? And it's specifically coming from Manly Perry of Old Path Baptist Church. And then he falsely accuses myself and other good men of God of attacking the deity of Jesus. <laughs> other good men of God. Imagine thinking that Jonathan Shelley is a good man of God. Imagine calling yourself a good man of God and being Jonathan Shelley. Why don't we just say F Joe Biden? And yes. Right. I never saw that happen directly, but if Manly Perry did accuse you of denying the deity of Christ, he would have been right, because what you are saying is that Christ died on the cross, meaning his divine nature died on the cross. You are stripping him of the divine attribute of immortality. You are deeming him to be something less than true divinity, if you're saying that he could have literally died in the divine nature and not just the human nature. Why don't we just say f Joe Biden? Even though that's exactly what he's doing. Someone. He's the one Look, I'm, I am marking Pastor Perry. Amen. Oh, really? Did you come to that conclusion all on your own, Aaron Thompson? I think he teaches false doctrine. I really am very doubtful that he's saved. Yeah. Oh, exactly. But when you say that God didn't die for our sins, that's, that's rank heresy yeah. of the worst sort. Yeah. 
Yeah, this isn't a cult at all, right? These guys just all come to this conclusion independent of one another. And what's funny is that they're constantly making videos about or preaching sermons about how the new IFB is not a cult. This is exactly what non-cults do. They're constantly preaching sermons. They're constantly trying to tell you they are not a cult. Look at this. This is from a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Tune in at 7 p.m. for Pastor Amanda's sermon, Why the New IFB is Not a Cult. This is exactly what non-cults do. They preach sermons on why they are not a cult. But anyway, let's get back to the video here. Sorry, not sorry. Now look, if there's a pastor out there who's teaching a false gospel. Latino Anderson, a.k.a. Bruce Mejia. He's saying that people don't burn in hell. Teaching a false gospel. He's saying that people don't. So he's saying that Manny Perry is preaching a false gospel. And then he completely lies about him. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But let's take a listen. If there's a pastor out there who's teaching a false gospel, he's saying that people don't burn in hell. He's saying that God and Jesus Christ did not die. Okay, that's that's all we need. Yeah. That's all the evidence that we need to say, yeah, Manly Perry is a wicked reprobate. Teaching false doctrine to the point where he is going to damn someone to hell who doesn't know the gospel is the sea by that type of teaching. And yeah, we don't need to make that much diligent inquiry because it's saying he's saying it out of his own mouth. Amen. It's straight out of the horse's mouth, right? Yeah. And look, this is what frustrates me sometimes with people is that they go to the opposite extreme. And they say, well, you know, don't judge him. You know, he, he, it's not what he meant. You know, you're taking him out of context. So I hope you caught that. He says that he doesn't have to do diligent inquiry. He could just make things up and not really uh, check to see if that is exactly what Manly Perry said. And as a matter of fact, it says, he said he, it frustrates him when people try to give other people the benefit of the doubt and hear them out first. But of course, this is how a cult operates. They don't want to hear you out if the leader in this case, Anderson decides that you are a reprobate, that's it. You're done. They don't want to hear anything else from you. Now, let's actually, because the accusation was made here that Perry was teaching a false gospel. He was saying that people don't burn in hell and that Jesus Christ didn't die. Now, let's actually hear from the, more, from the horse's mouth, because lucky for us, Pastor Perry released an open letter at the time of this controversy, which I believe was about three or four years ago, and he addresses these questions. And so... Here is one of the questions he addresses here. What do you mean when you say that people do not roast in hell? Do you no longer believe that Jesus went to the place of torment for our sins? That was another issue. He denied that Jesus burned in hell, which is, of course, uh, not true. Jesus did not burn in hell. But this is not what this video is about. He says, people will often point to the Passover lamb or burnt offerings as proof that Jesus roasted in hell. I was saying that no one roasts in hell like a lamb because flesh and meat don't go to hell. This is one of the reasons that the soul and spiritual body of an unsafe person can be tormented in the flames of hell for all eternity and never be consumed. So what Perry's actually saying here is that actual flesh bodies are not burning in hell, which is true. The flesh bodies of every unbeliever is currently firmly in the earth or decomposing there is not a single flesh body in hell right now so perry was right now mejia took this and turned it into perry doesn't believe that anybody burns in hell and i guess he wanted you to think that perry was teaching some sort of universalism or annihilationism or something but of course that's not even close to being true but of course honesty is not something that the new ifb is concerned with and regarding the death of christ this is what perry actually said it's a, uh, the question was, what do you mean when you say that God did not die on the cross? His answer, I have never said that God didn't die on the cross, and whoever suggested this is both absurd and slanderous. God absolutely did die on the cross, because Jesus Christ was and is God the Son. Amen. What I said was that God did not die in hell, because I now realize that would not have been possible. Hebrews 2.14 and 10.5 teach that in order for Jesus to be capable of death, he had to have a physical body prepared for him. This physical body was his one and only ticket to death. Amen. Apart from that physical body, death was not possible for Jesus because he is eternal life. Amen and amen. Since the physical body of Jesus did not go to hell, there was no way for him to die in hell, nor was there any reason for him to, because all sins were paid for on the cross. Pastor Perry is spot on here. He is getting to the fact that God cannot die. The divine nature cannot die because the divine nature by definition is immortal. That's what it means. That is one of the divine attributes. And so the only way that God the Son could actually die was by assuming a human nature that could die. 
And so Pastor Perry is spot on here. He is holding to historic Christian doctrine on the natures of Christ and still saying that there are one person. This is why he correctly says that God did die. We could say that God died because God took on a human nature and the human nature died. But you cannot say that the divine nature died. So Pastor Perry is spot on here. And the new IFB, of course, is teaching heresy by asserting that the divine nature did die.